And today, the world is celebrating Human Rights Day. On this day, we hope to raise awareness on social, economical, cultural, as well as physical rights, all to ensure the welfare and well-being of everyone. Yes, and this year's theme is the increasingly popular notion of equality announced by the United Nations earlier today. How far is the compliance and enforcement of human rights in today's world? To learn more about it, joining us on Asia Prime tonight is Mas Febi Yonesta, co-chair for the organization, Organizational Development of the Indonesian Legal Aid Foundation, or YLBHI. Yeah. Good evening, Mas Febi. Good evening. Thank you for joining us tonight on Asia Prime. Uh, first thing first, how do you see the implementation of human rights globally now? Are there any particular phenomenon or trend that we should pay more attention to? Well, there are some phenomena that have significant impact to the global human rights situation. The first is climate change, and the second is forced migration, and then COVID pandemic, and religious extremism and shrinking space of democracy. With regard to uh, climate change, I'd like to highlight the issue on the deforestation, which have a direct impact to the environmental destruction and land grabbing, while forced uh, migration is closely related to armed conflict or persecution. With regard to re religious extremism, it can lead to intolerance or even persecution. And about shrinking space of democracy, there are many incidents showing in tendency of some authoritarian regime to silence freedom of expression, freedom of assembly, and freedom of information through censorship, criminalization, excessive use of force, or any other unlawful limitation. Okay. Okay, so um, you mentioned earlier the shrinking space for democracy. Now, do you think that, democ that democracy always equals more human rights for its citizens, for a country's citizens? As we see with the case of Iraq and Afghanistan, the U.S. waged war on their soils in the name of democracy, apart from countering terrorism. But then we see that there are many human rights violations that, are, that, that occurred in the name of democracy. So what do you think? Yeah, there are, there are problems around democracy. Um, it's, it's happening in, 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 a, in any, many parts of the world. But what we need to do is we should really pay attention and be critical to any measures taken by authority that have tendency to limit uh, freedom of speech or assembly as the pillars, as the main pillars of democracy. We need to definitely demand uh, the state uh, to restore and protect that freedom by creating a, a clear balance between freedom of expression and any close of permissible limitation under the reasons of uh, national security, public order, individual reputation, or hate speech. We cannot really tolerate any unlawful limitation if we want to preserve democracy. Uh, and as the result of the uh, interventions of um, like, the, uh, like the, the powerful uh, states to to other countries, it, it's uh, it really need to consider the, the people inside uh, inside the countries, and um, the reality is that they, that that any measures which is not uh, in line with democracy itself can can have a result to force people to leave the country. Okay, and then uh, as you mentioned earlier, let's talk more specific about the freedom of speech and freedom of press. As we know, recently uh, it faces many challenges, especially in countries like Hong Kong or Myanmar, for example. How do you see them fare into this digital world that pushes for more transparency? How does this support the enforcement of human rights laws? Um. So what, what we really, really need to, to pay attention to that we are witnessing uh, from most media that freedom of speech is being violated in the name of hate speech, defamation, blasphemy, or treason, or um, any critical um, movement 
of, of the societies can be deemed as a anti-government. This is the proof that freedom of speech is not being respected and well protected. Uh, in contrary, uh, there are violations that violate that that the violation was perpetrated by the authority itself. We have to realize that the state cannot really accommodate all people's feelings being offended. In fact, the state the state should promote an open public debate to any conflict, conflicting opinions, thoughts, or religion, or even uh, political ideas. We should learn to become a country with a more mature democracy. And and but what we we witness we see in uh, in Hong Kong um, and currently in Myanmar, uh, not only in those two in those two countries, but in like there are tendency tendency of uh, anti democracy uh, from the uh, authority uh, from the regime uh, in many parts of the world. Uh, I think we need to really uh, speak. Uh, to criticize uh, that, that tendency. Okay, so some might argue in order to have a mature democracy, as you said it before, uh, the level of education and literacy in a country has to be up to par so that people can contribute meaningfully in that democracy. What's your view on that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, uh, the so so what what I'm want to explain this is a from the perspective of human rights. Like in, of course, uh, like uh, the element of the of the state of the country, even the people itself should contribute to to create a substantial democracy. What uh, we happen to see is that uh, that the democracy is only a matter of a formality. Uh, that's what so-called as a procedural democracy. And taken as an example to what happened in Indonesia, Indonesia relatively being considered as the champion of democracy and human rights. Uh, beside um, like Philippines in Southeast Asia. And it, it has shown so many, uh, um, so many human rights instruments uh, which has been ratified by Indonesia. However, Indonesia still faces a great challenge in implementing human rights, particularly human rights in practice and also um, substantial, substantial democracy. So what what we need to realize that uh, that in the in the democratic environment, that freedom of speech, freedom of assembly, and freedom of information is the most crucial things that need to be protected. Uh, but the thing is that there is no um, not enough understanding um, between the people and also the, the state apparatus around how to balance between those freedom in one side, in one place, and the, the, the permissible limitation in the other side. What, what, what we need to create is that balance, that, uh, that any uh, limitation under the ground of um, protecting individual reputation, national security, public order, or, or even uh, incitement to hatred, uh, should not undermine uh, the freedom of expression, assembly, and information. Otherwise, we will facing uh, the biggest challenge of, of this country's future. Okay. And then, uh, Mas Pebi, now let's bring COVID-19 into play. How do you think the pandemic affects the human rights of many, especially with the debate over vaccine mandates that many in the U.S. and other Western countries, they say, violate the right of self-determination? Mas Pebi. Yeah, 
indeed the issue of around around uh, COVID pandemic, the issue of uh, corruption around social aid has uh, indeed violate people's right to access uh, to livelihood assistance. Not to mention the distribution of vaccine, which was not widely spread. There are even issue of the discrimination around this uh, vaccine distribution in relation to economic differences uh, and also uh, uh, between the, glo uh, the, south, the south, uh, the north and the south, the global south. And it might be permissible to restrict uh, people's movement uh, because uh, this is the pandemic COVID is a and um, what we call it um, exceptional circumstances uh, that might be um, permissible to limit uh, certain Im implementation of certain rights but the thing is that uh, it cannot be uh, enacted um, if if the, the the enactment of of these limitations uh, can can undermine the exercise of the freedom, and there are, there are effort from from some um, human rights defenders and activists to to demand to the to the government. Uh, globally, I mean, to, the, to, to many countries that uh, have access to vaccine, to to be to to open to to open more access for countries who doesn't have the privilege to 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 create a vaccine. We really hope that uh, that that the distribution of vaccines uh, can be uh, widely spread regardless the uh, the ability of uh, certain countries in in accessing or in creating or in building and to buy the vaccine for their people and and we also recently witnessed that the this omicron um, version of COVID is somehow discriminating um, the African countries um, around uh, globally. Yes, I think you mentioned a lot of very good points also earlier when you mentioned climate change. That would definitely be a significant challenge for future generations. So now, what do you think uh, of any significant or insidious threat that we must be aware of in terms of our human rights. Yeah, I think we should we should pay attention uh, to the protection of human rights defenders because if you if you if you have if you really have concern over climate change issues, uh, over environmental issues, over COVID, over corruption, over many over many many parts of uh, of human rights we should really pay attention to the human rights defenders who work tirelessly to defend human rights the un special rapporteur the, the previous uh, un special Rapp rapporteur michelle frost has stated that human rights defender is the most dangerous and the most risky Professions in the whole world. Okay. Numbers of human rights defenders have been a victim of attack, harassment, killing, persecution, or criminalizations. Mm -hmm. Well, we have to realize that the role of human rights defenders in maintaining maintaining peace, promoting human rights, and preserving democracy are so crucial. Without their role, no one in the whole world would breathe the air of freedom. And there are increasing increasing tendency um, of of, uh, of perpetrators attacking or silencing uh, human rights defenders uh, okay. by those 
by by those um, what do you call it by uh, by those actions like attacking, harassing, okay. criminalizing, and so there are there that's a, a really clear uh, okay. threat against democracy, against human rights, against rule of law. You name yep. it. Um, if we cannot really protect human rights defenders. Uh, there are um, okay. a possibility. There are possibility that that any country or even the whole countries can can return to the uh, okay. to the dark age where okay. there is no human rights at all. There is no democracy sure. at all in the yeah. whole world.